What's happening, folks? Geologist Philip Prince looking out over Venezuela again. A lot of viewer questions about uh, sour, extra heavy crude oil uh, that you might find in this area, the Orinoco extra heavy oil belt. Did a video a couple of days ago uh, talking about oil basically throughout the nation of Venezuela. The diagrams there were sort of like if you, you took all the occurrences and kind of averaged them together. What's the basic idea? The one we're looking at here is very specific. I'm uh, going to talk both about the, the sour part that you keep hearing about uh, and the extra heavy part. Sour refers to sulfur. Uh, being in the oil and the sulfur is there as a as a product actually of the conditions in which the source rock of the oil formed. Uh, the sulfur remains in the oil in a variety of compounds, but hydrogen sulfide is one of the big ones. Bad stuff, very corrosive to equipment. Uh, something that does make refining a little bit more difficult. But that that's very much from the source side. Uh, as far as the extra heavy part goes, that's where it gets really interesting because the oil down here has has gone on literally an incredible journey. Um, and it's said to have migrated into its current location. So it's kind of like the, the wildebeest migration of oil or something like that. Very large volumes have traveled a, a big distance to end up where they are. And you would think of that as being basically in like, like the tip of of the the eastern venezuela basin and what we're going to try to do in this video is illustrate what what that means i'm going to sketch it out filming this out of order uh, i have already sketched it out just to see if it would work out in the allotted time uh the drawing itself feels like an incredible journey but i think uh i think it gives you a sense of what turns more normal oil, if you want to call it that, that, that forms down deep into this extra heavy stuff as it as it moves into place. So we'll uh, go ahead and get after that. I'm gonna gonna wrap back up looking at these maps again, but hopefully we can put this particular oil occurrence into context. Again, not all oil in Venezuela is this extra heavy stuff, but in the particular location that you're you're looking at here. Uh, it, it is distinct and there's a good reason for it. So uh, let's let's get after it. Okay, so I'm uh, going to try to to cover the uh, the sour and the extra heavy in a live diagram here all at once. And I got to tell you, um, this one is this one's going to be it's going to be pretty tough because <laughs> it's a uh, it's a lot of stuff to to try to manage. And it's the reason that I uh, I use like kind of a pre-made animation in the last video, but we'll see if we can uh, fire it up here all at once. Um, first things first, we'll, we'll do the sour part. Um, used an image kind of like this in the, uh, in the animation last time around. And the whole point of this was to show that got a source rock layer that's accumulating in an ocean basin, um, basically by by sediment settling out of the water column with a fair amount of organic material mixed with that. Organic material is algae, plankton, microorganisms that that use photosynthesis to run their life cycles. Those are the source of of the hydrocarbon that's ultimately in the oil. Uh, in an ocean basin like this, if you have very limited or or basically no oxygen in the deeper parts of the water where the sediment's actually piling up. That can, uh, because of other materials present in the water, set the stage for some chemical reactions with the organic material. Ocean setting like this has a lot of sulfate around. That's a source of sulfur. And in the low oxygen environment with other microbial activity, you can get that sulfur out of the sulfate and stick it on to the organic matter that ultimately is going to is going to turn into the oil. Now, the case of this source rock, uh, there's a lot of limestone involved with it. And in a situation like that, that is quite prone to producing this sour sulfur containing oil because there's very little iron in in the source rock. If there's iron present, the sulfur can stick to that as iron sulfide and it keeps it out of the oil. Uh, in the case again of a, of a limestone, there's a limit on that on that iron and the sulfur stays around as hydrogen sulfide 
and that ends up getting in the oil and and making it this this sour oil right so it's very much a product of of the source rock and its its starting location um just for the sake of of contrast i'll add a little image in here of another potential oil forming setting that you might see on earth which is from stretching a continent apart and making like a rift valley like you see in in east africa um that is a freshwater setting got land masses all around it there's different microorganisms that produce the organic source in that fresh water and it don't have a lot of sulfur in it um, so oil that is generated from for example a, a rift basin with a freshwater lake can be the opposite of sour it could be it could be a sweet oil just because the the chemical environment that the organic matter and the sediments are collecting it is really different now here comes the uh here comes the complex part um let's turn this into the into the extra heavy okay so to turn this into kind of the oil generating phase we're gonna have to take it crunch it from one side and basically we're gonna have to do a lot of a lot of really fast uh erasing here at least that went pretty well. Uh, see how quickly I can put this back together. Uh, end up with the mountains there. Stretch a basin out like that. Do a little bit more erasing here. There's a chance that we're going to make it. I don't know. Very good. Get that cleaned up. And the reason we've got to erase is we're, you know, we're sort of totally changing uh, what materials are going to be present and where. all right so remember the familiar green source layer there um, now that has been down here in the deep parts of the basin it's been kind of broken and stacked up on top of itself i don't like that one very much worked pretty well right there yeah probably work out something like that pretty good be a lot of green right there some of these are going to have that gray basement rock mixed in that work and in this particular case this is uh this is the area that we're particularly interested in because this is all the sediment that has filled in to this new basin that is formed why did the basin form uh you got this big big thick area right here where the uh where the layers have have stacked on top of themselves that's sort of weighing the crust down uh and also the edge of south america is is kind of tucked down under the edge of the caribbean plate back back in this direction so it's it's literally being bent downward and that produces the basin into which all of this younger tan colored sediment can fill right so got that part wiped out need to fill in up here finish our finish our cleanup here and again there's there's a chance that we're gonna get this done Back down to a tolerable size there. And it should work out. Fill that in with a different color up there. So that's going to be our land surface. Looking pretty good. And then we got all of these layers here that have, have filled into filled into the basin. I actually want to do something like have some curves on a few of those. Cool. So in the case of eastern Venezuela, where the, the Orinoco extra heavy crude is forming, we went through all this trouble to get to this, to get to this one, this one final step here. Um, the oil that is now the extra heavy crude started off down here deep in the basin where the source rock has been buried and it's reached the temperature to generate oil. 
And then that oil got up into these tilted reservoir layers. Uh, it's a lot of sandstone in here that the oil can move through. And oil wants to migrate up when it, when it can geologically. And that oil has migrated its way up here and it, it's stuck up here at really shallow at really shallow depth right so we'll get rid of all that and we'll we'll park it in here at, at, at shallow depth that's where the extra heavy crude is located now why is why is it extra heavy it's very very shallow it's been broken down actually by more microbial activity uh it's had water from from the surface it can kind of get down there uh and and basically circulate and alter that oil because it is in a pretty shallow reservoir and it's also at quite a low temperature because it's just not very deep in the earth um, there's oil in in situations like this in in Ven venezuela that is not extra not extra heavy so that's where your extra heavy is um and it's it's shallow and it's just undergone this tremendously long journey to get there. Um, the oil you would have there is is not so heavy. And the way you would you would kind of reference this in the landscape is that not so heavy oil uh, is going to be basically close to the close to the foot of the mountains there, where the uh, where the basin is is at its deepest. Right. So there fundamentally a, a product essentially the same source rock it's just that it's that migration history that makes the extra heavy distinct and the fact that it's spent a lot of time at a pretty shallow depth where it can can basically be degraded and and altered uh down here away in the, the deep parts of the basin temperatures are still high you, you don't get the degradation there right so the sour part, that's just a product of the source rock and the effect that it accumulated in, in a, an ocean with, with low oxygen conditions, basically no oxygen available in the deeper parts and plenty of sulfur around. Um, the, the extra heavy part is fundamentally what happened to the oil after it formed and made its way uh, up, into that, up into that reservoir there at the very, very edge of the basin. And that's what the uh, that's what the Orinoco, the Orinoco extra heavy belt is. Uh, is this kind of like a kind of like a strip like that um, right along like the very tip of that basin where you you've got kind of a kind of a collection point. The oil moves up there uh, until the sandstone layers either either kind of thin and pinch out, or there's also instances where the, the sandstone is all like clogged up with tar basically, and the, the oil can't escape through that. So hopefully that, that gives you an idea there. A lot of trouble to get to that, but the whole idea of flexing that basin down and tilting the layers for the oil to migrate up them, that's really the key to, uh, to producing this accumulation that's the, the extra heavy belt. So we'll uh, hop back to Google Earth here. Okay, made it. That was that was rough. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna have to to stay away from from diagrams like that from now on. I think a lot of Control Z there got through it. Um, if we spin this view around, uh, essentially like looking looking in this direction, we'll put the uh, we'll put the end result of the diagram on the screen there. Uh, the diagram you're looking at it, it's basically a cutaway um, of of something like we should we got a good color here something like like that right um you can see the uh the the orinoco river flowing along right there uh in the heavy oil belt uh you know again it's going to be kind of kind of out here out here right on right on the edge right so the the, the big takeaway is that the basin that is is feeding feeding up kind of into the into the point or the edge of it there where that oil 
after having traveled a long way, ends up at shallow depth and ends up being degraded. It's it really is right along kind of the kind of the edge of the basin. Um, the reason that that the the heavy stuff is left behind is that the lighter components of the oil oil is a, a big complex mixture of of hydrocarbons. The lighter components have have been degraded away preferentially. So so what's left uh, again is only that that heavy tarry stuff that does have have value for certain applications, um, particularly in the US. A lot of debate over whether or not it's even worth it to, to mess with this stuff. But I think a lot of folks say say that there is. And again, um, it, though it's a different product, it is still a big source of, of carbon, carbon energy. Um, the, the combination of the source rock, which is the sour part, and then that crazy long migration up into that up into that shallow storage area is what's come together to produce this this sour extra heavy cruise. It's kind of interesting to think about something like like oil. First of all, traveling a long way, kind of underneath underneath the earth, uh, and then and that is over long periods of time, and then being being actually broken down by things like microbial processes and water mixing in with it and stuff like that but but that absolutely is the case and there's chemical changes that have gone on to leave these almost kind of like kind of like residues that are the the extra heavy stuff an interesting way to to think about it and particularly to think about like kind of the big volume here is it, it's almost like because that basin is tilted it's it's draining but it's draining upward uh you know, and, and accumulating in, in this particular area here. All of that sediment that poured into the basin, that's kind of an interesting thing as well. Um, that was derived from, we can get a bunch of colors up here. You had had sediment pouring into the basin from this side, a lot of it coming from, from this direction. You also had it coming in from uh, this kind of, kind of uplifted Guyana shield area um, as well. So, there's a big, big sediment source that provided the burial to to generate the oil, like I talked about in the other video. Uh, and there's an abundance, of course, of of sandstone layers in that in that big sediment fill. That's good reservoir and and good and good migration um, as well. So an interesting kind of like combination of combination of variables that that made things work out here, um, like like they did but the uh i was interested to get to get so many questions about the the sour the sour side of things um petroleum like it's it is a very it is a very chemical thing my involvement in the geology world is very much from the structural geology side as you can probably get a sense from the from the diagrams but thinking about things like ocean basin with sulfate in it but reducing conditions and and whether you're dealing with limestone or or shale or something i could just the 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 range of variables that come together to make all of it work it's 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 pretty complex um so i hope, hope you found this video interesting hope um hope that that drawing kind of ends up being understandable um basically there's there's a variety of oils in venezuela and the extra heavy is just one particular example that has had a had a specific history but um i don't know it's getting a lot of attention uh and as I said a couple of days ago um it's gonna have to have to see where this one goes hope you found this video interesting hope you check out the next one when it comes along